How are you doing today? Great, how are you? I'm doing excellent. Um, you're someone who I've admired your work for a very long time. I believe it goes back to Carlito's way. So I want to definitely jump back in time. Um, yeah. Do you, what do you remember about making that one? Because to me, like every time it comes on like HBO or whatever, I'm like hooked. Yeah, that was my first movie ever. Um, and what I remember was I just was a kid, a kid in a candy shop. I was working with Al Pacino and Sean Penn and Viggo Mortensen um, and uh, Brian De Palma. And uh, I was just, whenever you saw me smile in that movie, that was real. <laughs> <laughs> what, I was like, ah, this is great. But I would imagine working with that level of of talent has to rub off a little bit on just the way you present your the way you work in future gigs. Yeah. Just learning from masters like that. Yeah. What, what do you remember? What you took away from that experience that you said, yeah. I need to be like this in the future. Yeah. You know, the one big th I learned a lot, a lot of stuff. But the one big thing that to this day. I'll never forget um, is Al Pacino's kindness towards me. Like he went out of his way to make sure I was taken care of, and he would run lines with me. He would ask me how I was doing when things weren't quite um, working out on set. He would make sure that I was uh, aware of certain things and that I was protected. Um, and he didn't have to do that. He was like nominated for two Oscars that year <laughs> and he was Al Pacino and and uh, and yeah I mean there was there was one incident where um, I was almost uh, cut out of a scene because I couldn't keep my eyes closed and they were blinking from too much caffeine and it was messing up the shot and so Brian was gonna kind of just skim over me onto him and it was my death scene. It was my moment, and Pacino knew that. And uh, and I have I was I was up for like 23 hours straight. So I was on espresso the whole time. So I was sh literally shaking. You know I can't stop it, and that's what was causing my eyes to flicker. And De Palma said, "Okay, we'll just go over and P and Al needed to uh, take a flight to here to L.A. to." For the for the Academy Awards, and it was like you know, an hour before his flight or something, and he was like, "No, I'll just skim over and we'll just get the shot." And he cleared the room, Pacino, kept me there, and he said, "I want everyone out," and I was like, about to leave. He was like, "No, no, stay, stay. I'm just gonna have an espresso. I just needed everyone out of the room." And uh, I'm like, all right, you know, what the hell am I doing here? And then he's like, do you want an espresso? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I did not want an espresso, you know, but it, you're never going to turn out Pacino's espresso. So I had an espresso with him. I don't know what we talked about, but it seemed like hours went by. And then he called everyone back in, did the scene, and my eyes didn't flicker. And he left, and uh, and yeah, I'll. That's the lesson I take away from that movie. That's an amazing story, and I say thank you for sharing. Seriously, yeah. um, it's the first time I said this movie on camera. I've told friends the story, but it took me like probably ten years to tell that story to anyone, just because I held it so sure, so close to my heart. Yeah, but that's that's yeah. a phenomenal story. Like, really, thank you for sharing. Uh, jumping into why I get to talk to you today. I that was it. That story was the whole thing, man. I gave you that story. <laughs> right. And uh, out. <laughs> no, I, listen, I could talk about Korean Way and, and, and some of the other movies uh, for a while. Yeah, but, but let's talk replicas. Right. So one of the things I like about, uh, one of the things I love about is when Hollywood takes on like future sci-fi that doesn't seem so far away. Yeah. Because I look like a hundred years ago at what the human race was like and the technology we take for granted now. And I look at this and I'm like, it's only a matter of how many years, you know? Yeah. So could you sort of talk about that aspect of the story? Yeah, I love that too. I love things that are like, oh my God, this can be happening like tomorrow. Uh, and, and that's what makes it like really scary and thrilling and kind of fascinating. To me, you know, because I often wonder, what if we could do this? What if we we oh we could do that? And you see it, you, you could see the possibility of those things happening. And with this film, 
um, that's one of the things that drew me to it was that this is like set a little bit in the future, but it's like not too far in the distant. Well, I was going to say, I don't even know. What I wonder is there's so much, you, like, for example, in the news recently, it came out that like I'm a Chinese scientist uh, did the CRISPR thing. Mm -hmm. So like the genetically cleared certain things. And it's like it was done without anyone knowing. So I just wonder how close are we without even realizing that stuff like this is going on? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, there's stuff on my phone that I'm amazed at that I can do that with, you know, which is communication. Like, te technology is like, you know, I mean, we all know this, but it's, you know, it's changing and advancing so, so rapidly, you know, that it's like, you know, whatever we thought was going to be in the year 2020 is here now, Completely. you know, and, and so there's so much that I think are, is behind the curtain that we don't know about that is going to be right in front of our face, us dealing with those things and contending with them or adapting to them. Uh, you know, how much do we just stay on our own path? How much do we have to um, incorporate them into our lives and how do they affect us, you know, and the benefits of that, but also the complications of that. Uh, I'm very curious, um, you obviously have played people that do things and say things you completely fundamentally disagree with. Is mm -hmm. it super fun to do that or is it ever uncomfortable as an actor? Um, it's more fun than being uncomfortable with it because there is that, that, that thing of like, this is someone else, you know, and like, this is not me, this is a character, you know, and finding like where that, finding the truth and the justification in that person's brain that doesn't make it a necessarily so off, you know, but to really connect the dots with like, oh, it makes perfect sense that that person would say that or do that because of X, Y, and Z. And filling in the X, Y, and Z is what I find really fascinating with what I do. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Keanu. Um, yeah. What is it like working with him? Because I've seen him on set before. He's the nicest guy. Yeah, he is, right? The I, nicest yeah, guy. Yeah. You know, so could you sort of talk a little bit about working with him? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've always admired and respected his work. You know, I've always I love The Matrix and lots of projects he's done since then. And I've heard that, that he's such a nice guy. But um, I wasn't quite sure of it, you know. And when you meet him, you get that but you also get how humble he is and how generous he is and how unassuming he is and how much he deeply cares about the work you know and uh and to me that's what it's all about when we're working you know and he has all of that so it was a real thrill and he's a special dude um before i run the time i want to switch to something else i'm a big fan of james gray oh and yeah I, and i know you did add add astra with him yeah um i've heard some interesting things about this project and yeah. james said to me that it was a daunting, before he shot it, he said, it's a very daunting script, it's a challenging one. Yeah. What was it like working on that? God, I love James Gray. He's, he's, he's the best, he's the best. Um, he's just so, he's amazing, man. He's like, it's like you're with a friend and you imagined something when you were six and then you're like an adult and you're doing it with that person in a professional atmosphere, but as if you're six, you know? And he takes such joy and care with everything he does, and his attention to detail is amazing. He's so kind, super smart dude, constantly pushing the envelope. And um, it was, it, I mean, I just was like, I'll do, I'll do anything. You know, he called and said, you know, think about this. I was like, I don't have to think about it. You know, he's like, yeah, but it's small and what, I'm like, I don't care. I just, I just, I just want to work with you, you know? So, um, he can ask me to, he doesn't need to write a bigger role for me next time. I'll do a smaller part. <laughs> I, I completely understand. Yeah. The last thing for you, uh, I, I haven't seen Bumblebee yet, but yeah. everyone I know that has tells me it's fantastic. It is. Everyone. Shockingly. Um, right, like everyone. So um, what, what part did you play in it and how much fun was it yeah, working on it? I play, I play doctor, a, a military doctor in it who's, um, who's actually in favor of research with the robots. And, um, and it turned out to be a really, really good movie with a lot of heart. And um, I think a lot of folks are going to love it.
Thank you.